This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. kids doing up here in the attic? Comet it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, net. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, we used to just uh, get our old TV set, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some are even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that in false colorization law through in the 20s. Those shows must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <coughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded informed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And tonight, it's the spy shows. But first, before we jump into that topic, I uh, just want to give the information as usual. We're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on ACTV on Vast Wasteland. And for some strange reason, if you'd actually want to write into us, Right to Vast Wasteland, Box 151526, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And now let's zip right into Spaceshows. Take it away, Wilbert. Okay. Back in the, just um, zip right in there. Yes, that's exactly what we're doing here. Oh, that was a zip? Okay. Yeah. Good evening, television audience. The um, spy shows that um, were on during the 60s and 70s were basically, or I guess you could look at just about any of the spy shows and say that they kind of came from the uh, the Cold War era, and they were probably pretty much spawned by the um, novels done by Ian Fleming, the James right. Bond novels, right. because around that time they, they came out and they got to be real popular. The fact that um, John F. Kennedy, who was president right there at the early part of the 60s, um, really liked them, um, just boosted the popularity, and everybody just figured they had to get out there and they had to read these books, and then um, TVs, well, the movies started up right around um, 63, 64, and um, the TV um, producers were like, hey, we've got to jump on this. We've got to get in there and do some spy things, too. I mean, there were some spy shows that were out during the 50s, actually. Um, but most of them really tended to be more like, uh, you know, 
almost like public service messages type things. They weren't they weren't as so dramatic as they were, you know, based on actual files from, you know. That's that's probably whatever. true. They um they did quite a few interesting things though, I guess. Um because the earliest reference I found was one back in 1951. Not that we can spend a lot of, a lot of time right, there, because that's mostly 60s outside and of 70s. outside of our uh, we'll outside of our, our area moment. there. But there was um, one called Shadow of the Cloak that was on from 51 to 52. There's one called A Man Called X that was on in 1956. There's one Man from Interpol. Well, that really gets into our section here. This is was on in the 60s, from January 60 to October 60. Okay, now let's talk about one somebody watched. Okay, well here's one. <laughs> I caught it on reruns, but I did watch it. Burke's Law, Amos Burke, and then it went. In, it became Amos Burke's Secret Agent. It was just a wonderful show. Um, by golly, basically this Don't Amos talk Burke about guy what was a. <laughs> well, see, I caught it on reruns. I used to catch it when I went down to my grandmother's house in uh, I just remember South the title Carolina. Of that one, but I don't. Oh, hey, this was great. It's got Gene Barry. He played a uh, Los Angeles. Chief of Detectives, who was also a millionaire. You <laughs> of have course. to be a millionaire to be a spy. That's right. And then uh, the character, um, it first appeared earlier in another show, but then he had a, a Rolls Royce. He had this chauffeur that would drive him around, and he basically go around and... Uh, was he like a freelance spy or something? <laughs> no, he was an actual, um, an actual detective. He worked on a police force for a while there, but then he, he did branch out on his own. And then he... Um, worked later for um, a U.S. intelligence agency and when, she, when, <laughs> when he became, um, when the show actually changed its name to Amos Burke's Secret Agent. And on this show, they premiered or debuted a character who later went on to have her own show, which you'll talk about here a little later. And then, let me see, there was a show called Espionage, which right. was on from October 63 to 64. And then, well, 64, this is like the big year. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> when, when one of the biggest shows of the spy era started, <laughs> The Man from Uncle. Right. And that, you know, you got uh, Napoleon Solo, Ilya Kuryakin, they worked for Uncle, UNCLE, the United Network Command Law and Enforcement, which was based in the, um, the UN building in New York, which was just a really neat idea. They'd go in through this little tailor shop, then they'd walk through a secret tunnel, and they had their ID badges that would get them in, and they'd go through all the secret tunnels, and they ended up in the UN building, and they, um, were basically um, the TV equivalent of the James Bond movies, although there were two. There wasn't just one. There was two. Uh, Napoleon Solo was like the major, um, what would you say, the major character here, and Ilya Kuryakin, his Russian sidekick, and um, they just pretty much went around and solved your uh, basic spy kind of espionage kind of, kind of thing. There. Well, at the beginning, it was uh, it was. I mean, there was always like a a, a twinge of of uh, almost like satire to it. True. But as the, as the show went on, and it got into the era when uh, Batman became big, when everybody said, oh, well, satire's in, so it really got silly. Yeah. <laughs> that was around the time from The Girl from Uncle, or true, Stephanie true. Powers. Yeah, yeah. And that was, I mean, that was just totally gone. You know, any pretense of seriousness was pretty well shot Stephanie down. Stephanie Power and Noel Harrison, son of Rex Harrison. Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't, they, gee, the girl from Uncle didn't do until 66, which was two years out into the show. Right. Into the era, I, I guess, here. I got a question, because this is like one I didn't watch. What did Uncle stand for? United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and there was Thrush. Well, all I remember yeah. on a Bad lot guys. of these was the beginnings. Either the music or the person with the big voice saying, The Man from Uncle. <laughs> they didn't just, and you I guess have I had to it go off. to bed or, or something. Or you went to bed or something. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and um, let me see. Good, good, um, they of course music. they had they good did good music. This, the next show that I'll mention here had probably some of the most memorable music of the spy shows. Um, it was on from April 65 to September 66. Secret Agent. Oh, yeah. Oh, that had a man who cool lays songs. a life of danger. Hey. <laughs> and everyone he meets, he stays a stranger. <laughs> Every move he makes. Uh, anyway. Well, everyone thought that was a cool song. It was. It was a cool well, song. If you it saw was the show or not, you probably know the song. Done by a cool guy, too. It, it was just, <laughs> yeah. Patrick McGowan, cool who song, basically cool did, uh, did a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, of course, he went on to do. Um, well, what was the other one? Danger Man, that other show. Well, kind of an earlier, not really a spy show, more of just like he was 
kind of like intrigue, foreign intrigue, but not really spy show. And went on to do like the, I, I don't know, what would you call it? The, the Prisoner, kind of like the the antithesis of the spy show, really. Yeah, they... Um, it was he, more like a, uh, this psychological drama. What happens is the this secret agent, who you assume is the same character from Secret Agent Man, although they never say. Right. Uh, he was always just he number says, six. He says, I'm ready to retire. And so he goes off and retires, but when he does, the government or somebody, and they don't ever say who. Right. It's all, I mean, everything's always, it's all very deep and significant. That everything's couched in symbols and all this. But uh, he's uh, kidnapped and taken to this island called The Village. And he's like uh, forced to stay there by these like this bizarre, what were those things called? The village balloons? people. Well, they didn't <laughs> have a name, but they were. They were just these giant balloons. balloons. They were like the uh, the guards of the and island. They would patrol Any the island. He yeah. would try to get away. This balloon would just pop up out of nowhere, and it would follow him. They like the blamans on, uh, yeah. <laughs> on Monty Python, yeah. you know. But he would. It would. Uh, he spent like the whole show trying to figure who was in charge and how to get off the island. And when it's over. He never does figure it out, I don't believe. No, I, Gee, so I don't. much like in life. Fact, uh -huh. Who's in charge, and in how do I get off this right. island? <laughs> they've gone on. They've got a prisoner uh, comic book now, and mm -hmm. they're just they're just redoing the. I mean, they're bringing back the whole idea. So it's like he never got off the darn island. He's still there. <laughs> and then, uh, let me see. Okay, we got secret agent. We go on. Here's another one that was probably really big. Um, get smart. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, September '65 to September '70. That's a whole big five years. That's oh, pretty yeah, that good was, record that, for the. Uh, and Spice one of one of my big got a favorites. In there. Yeah, there's no question. One of my big favorites in shows. Uh, um, Agent Maxwell Smart, played by Don Adams, and. Uh, for little kids, that is uh, exactly where they got Inspector Gadget. True. Basically. He is the voice of Inspector Gadget, Gadget, but that's also where they got the idea for Inspector right. Gadget. Inspector he, Gadget's not new. Always had these wonderful things like the, the shoe phone, the wonderful shoe phone. The that, cone uh, of silence. Yeah, the cone of silence, which never really or worked. Never really uh, worked. <laughs> let's see. The, um, I, I, what I really love was the, this one where they, uh, this uh, chaos agent uh, goes ahead and kisses Max. She has this poison on her lips trying to, trying to uh, poison him. And, uh, and she's like, you didn't die, what happened? And he just like, he went like this. Yeah, Plastic fake lips, lips. <laughs> lip guards. Yeah, well, I think, the I think that it that made fun of made, a lot of the... Made, um, um, Batman really great, too. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always being prepared for every, right. every edge <laughs> instant there. Well, this show pretty much made fun of that. that well, it made fun of just about everything, right. I think. Uh, life itself. It <laughs> <laughs> everything. Let's there see. we go. You got uh, Maxwell Smart, Agent 99, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the Chief. Yep. Thaddeus the Chief. Yeah. Yeah. Never knew his last name, I don't think. And, and they all and they all uh, uh, and they all worked for a greeting card company. Uh, that was their cover. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a great show. Okay, then uh, let's move on here. Well, about the same time as that one started up in September of '65. Well, this one runs from September '65 to September '66. Honey West, mm -hmm. which was the character that was um, premiered from the Burke's Law show, and she basically, um, well, she was kind of a freelance detective kind of person here also. She um, went Francis. around with her. Um, yeah, that was Anne Francis. Anne Francis. And, her, and one of the big things on this show was she agreed to do the show if they'd buy her this very expensive wardrobe with one of the, which is why every show she had these glamorous gowns on was because they, the, one of the conditions of the contract was she kept to keep, got to keep them when the show was over. And you know, she had this really cool, uh, like a black Catwoman type suit that she wore a lot. It had a, mm -hmm. A leopard belt and leopard boot kind of thing. She had this ocelot, too. This ocelot named Bruce. Ocelot, a little wild it's South a, American. Or no, they're from Africa. Okay, African. some sort of cat. African cat. That's the important African thing. spotted cat <laughs> named Bruce. And she went around with her um, business partner, Sam Bolt, and she did karate, and they had a car. She did judo, karate, all kinds of weapons. She was a weapons expert. And... Um, let me see, your traveling office was especially equipped with spy label band labeled um, H.W. Bolt and Company TV service. And so um, it just had everything that they needed right in that van there, and they would go around and just, you know, pretty much do the... Uh, do the spy thing. Do the spy huh? thing. <laughs> they yeah. did the spy yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, another big one here, and it started also in September of 65, ran from September 65 to September 68, I Spy. I Spy. 
Okay, and this, and Bill this, Cosby's show. Yeah. And, and Robert Culp. Culp show. Bill Cosby and Robert Culp, right. And this was kind of different, too, because it was more like, uh, it was serious situations. The, the situations weren't, like, laughable, but they kind of just, like, joked their way through them a right. lot. You know, I mean, Maybe when, it, when it came to action, doing. it was like, hey, we're going to, you know, get the job done. But most of the time, they were, like, making, making fun of each other, and it was a, very different in that. Kelly Robinson and Alexander Scott were a team of American agents. <laughs> the cover was Kelly was a top seated tennis pro. Kelly was uh, Bill Cosby, I guess. Right. Man. No? No. She, Kelly was uh, Robert Cole. Really? And then uh, Bill well, Cosby by golly, played, you're right. played his coach. Alexander Scott. Yep. Oh, well, he was a, a trainer, okay. He was his trainer and a traveling companion. He was a graduate of Temple and a Rhodes Scholar. Well, he was a graduate of Temple, by golly. Yep. <laughs> That's, That's Bill out. Golly. Uh -huh. Bill Cosby did Bill graduate Cosby from Temple, Temple okay. In there. And then the other guy was a Rhodes Scholar. Okay, so Kelly Anderson, Kelly Robinson, and Alexander Scott. Yeah, that was a fun one. It was a good one. Well, how about another one that started in '65? Another one that ran from six, September '65 to September '70. That big five-year span there, probably one of my favorites, <laughs> the, the Wild Wild, Wild West. West. <laughs> With, uh, which was well, like really cool because it combined the western, which was popular, right, and the spy show, and it lengthened the, which the was whole popular. the whole the western genre, which at the time oh, was starting to wind down. Yeah, because a lot of the shows, I mean, other than like Gunsmoke and uh, Bonanza, these are the guys were, were, that were starting like to go show. down. And yeah. uh, this show uh, well, almost outlasted <laughs> the rest of the genre. This is true because and of it, the weird twist in it, of course. The, all these uh, anachronistic things going on in it. They um, were basically, they were secret service agents that worked for um, President, uh, let's see, that's Grant, yeah. yeah. And they Grant. traveled around the country in a, a train, one a cool train car. Train. <laughs> it was a cool <laughs> they train. They <lived> in a <laughs> train car that had uh, just weapons everywhere. They'd push a button here, guns would flip out here, they'd push another button, here, some champagne would twirl around yeah. or something, you know. They, push another button, this whole wardrobe would open up, they push another button, the wardrobe would slide back, and here's all these other weapons and things back there. And basically, you got um, James T. West. Well, wow, was James T. West, that's Robert, Robert um, Conrad. Conrad. And he's the, uh, the lead agent, the Mr. Suave and Devonair, Mr. I'll go out and find the girls, you solve the crime yeah. guy. <laughs> If I well, just happen to happen to fall upon some clue <laughs> while I'm with this girl, well, that's nice too. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah Artemis, Artemis was Gordon, the smart one. Right. Artemis yeah. would go around. He'd wear the disguises. He'd sneak into the places. He'd find the stuff out. I mean, they were both, you know, pretty well going. It's just like um, West would just go busting in, and Artemis would sneak in, you know. And but they had things like um, he would pull out his his trusty wrist derringer or something, you know, and put this gigantic arrowhead into it <laughs> and blast across the street with this high tension wire that he could slide across, you know, and it would always stay there and nobody else could figure out, well, they, how in the heck he's doing this stuff, you know. And they had the really excellent criminal on there, Loveless. Well, Miguelito Miguel Loveless. Loveless Love, yeah, mm -hmm. the little well, guy. Well, he, he's a, a, a diminutive guy. Well, he's played by Michael Dunn, who um, was, was a, a small person. Yeah. But he was the greatest criminal mind in the whole West, it seemed like. He was always... he. Let me see. He, I don't he know. He invented LSD. <laughs> he, this, this guy was just incredible. He, um, he had, like, didn't he have like robots at one point? You know, he like, had robots. I mean, all these, all these bizarre <laughs> things that you know. And he always had these, these nice big women with him. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were just big statuesque women. He well, here's, here's, here's three of Loveless's nastiest, what they judge in this book is his nastiest plots. He invented LSD and wanted to poison the entire world's water supply with it, which. At that time, 1965, I don't think many people would argue with him there. Well, it's not just 65. We're looking at that. He invented a pesticide <laughs> that, that eliminated bugs and caused a famine in the Indian Territory. Then he was going to use the Indians as slaves to take over the world with. Okay, and uh, this is the one I like the best. He discovers the other dimension inside of paintings. Yeah. Which, that, that's just really far-fetched, but it's like a neat idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was neat when they did it, too, because you'd, like, see things, and then when you'd go in the painting, it was like, oh, eh, and you'd be on the... the <laughs> and they'd put the paintings in banks, and then they'd go and rob the banks. The interesting sideways image that you get from um, in, in Batman, when they'd always show the bad guys, yeah, they'd they put it on the gonna, interesting yeah. twisted image. Uh -huh. it, was, uh, it was just a, a really great show. It really was.
Okay, then we move on here. Well, there's one called Blue Light, which I remember watching, but I couldn't really tell you much about it. No, I don't know. It was on from music. like January 66 to August 66. And then from well, March 66. But there's something about that I thought I remembered. Let me okay. See. I was reading about that. It was significant for some reason. Maybe. Robert Goulet. That's right. Robert <laughs> Goulet the spy. was the spy. That's that was Whoa, like. Oh, I'm a spy. <laughs> this was like almost before he was singing even. Yeah. You know, <laughs> unless he just figured, hey, that's cool. Uh, spies yeah. get the girls. I want to be a singer. I'm, I'll see. I'll, I'll be, be a, spy. a spy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That didn't last. That's true. It didn't. Not not at all. It was and about then, a, a, almost a year. <laughs> in the same year, though, one of the longest running shows. The Avengers. And it uh, was ran from March '66 to September '69. At least, first right off there, it did for that long. But it made several reincarnations after that. Not that the um, American viewing public got to get all of them, but um, it was. Yeah, they had Tell them the, who these uh, people are up here. Okay, we got um, Jonathan Steed, who was Patrick McNee, and yeah. then um, Emma Peel, played by Diana Rigg. Who was, like, really cool. Yeah, he always went around with the umbrella, and you thought he was like, what's this guy going to do with this umbrella? But the umbrella had a sword inside. Yeah. That was well, really the umbrella cool. actually had several different things. Well, it had several different umbrellas. Kind it of, had kind a of camera, a, kind a, of camera a gas projector, a sword case, a tape recorder, and, of course, it was an umbrella. Those were just some of the functions of his umbrella. Which, yeah, it's kind of like the penguin. Right. Who came first? <laughs> uh, well, actually, the, the penguin did. But um, this was in Britain, so it's like, you know, they, they didn't watch Batman. So anyway, but, um, and then Emma Peel was the, uh, once again, the lady in the nice, the nice black slinky clothes with the high heels. And right. Did karate and judo and Well, do you know where everything. her name came from? Good Emma question. Peel. OK, uh, it's a British thing for. There's, there's like a word they say, man appeal, M appeal, ah, M appeal. Okay. So that's why she was on the show. But she was clever and everything, you know. And it was a great show. And then they came back later with the new Avengers in 75. And that was like on CBS Late Night or something. Right. We, we did kind of get a hold of that a little bit. But uh, it just, um, and in fact, they, they, they're going to come out with this fall an Avengers comic <laughs> book. Mm. <laughs> the new, new adventure. The new, new, new. <laughs> well, I think they're going to go back and just kind of bring the whole thing up to date, which they've done with. They're also, they've also got a Wild World West comic book. I don't think I mentioned that. They do have a Wild World West comic book. See, you don't read comic books, do you, Bernie? Oh, not at all. No, not no. me. Oh, okay. No. I, I wouldn't know. But that okay. same, same year, another yeah. big show came out. Well. A long-running show. Well, let's see which one you have here. I have Mission Impossible, personally. Okay, cool okay. Movie. Well, I've got I've got a couple before Mission Impossible. Okay, okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll Impossible run here. Um, <laughs> September 66 to September 67. For both of these, in fact. One was T.H.E. Cat, who was um, Thomas Hewitt Edwin Cat. He, like, worked for a circus, and then he was, like... He was an uh, acrobat, wasn't he? Yeah, he was an acrobat in the circus. He did high wire kind of thing. Then he became a, a cat burglar. And then he um, joined up, and they hired him to do uh, government things. You know, well, wasn't he sort of a bodyguard kind of bodyguard who solves the the the, the uh, crime? Wasn't that his? What his assignment actually to protect more than to? Well, let's see dive here. Dive into the mystery of it all. He uh, okay. He fought crime by guarding those clients who had been marked for death. Only T H E Cat stood between them and their would-be assassins. Declining to use weapons himself, Cat relied on his quickness and agility to protect his clients and himself. Okay, but it's, um, it, was, it was kind of a neat show. I mean, I don't know how many people out there really remember this one, but it was a fun one. And then that was the same year also the girl from Uncle came out, which lasted for just about a year. Right, you know, because Stephanie that was Powers pretty much at the end of the whole Uncle thing. Right. Oh, then I've got another one here, The Man Who Never Was. Hey. That lasted from like September 66 to January 67, which means it almost never was either. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> it's a show that never was. And then, it almost never was. Yeah, from September 66 to September 73, that's a whole big seven years. Seven years. We had Mission Impossible. There you go. Okay. You know, I. How did they get the tape to like shh and dissolve and. I would say oh, that man. was dry ice, personally. But. Yeah, probably. Something like that. Of course, you had, uh, originally, you had Daniel Briggs was the main, uh, that was like the first season. 
Episodes, Good morning, Mr. Briggs. Ever, episodes you really never see. Did they right. even put well, them in the syndication package? Maybe they did because people get confused. Well, I don't know, but I do remember going to uh, Channel 10, and they had the picture that had the original cast on there. You know, and they had Mr. Mm -hmm. Briggs and... Uh, well, there's Mr. Phelps. And uh, what's, what was his name? Roland Hand and Cinnamon Carter and Bar Barney Collier and Willie Armitage, who were um, Martin Landau, Barbara Bain, Greg Morris, and Peter Lupus along with Stephen Hill, but then the second season and on after that was always Mr. Mr. Phelps. Right, he had... Uh, it was Peter Graves. What else do we have here? Uh, well, after Star Trek left, um, Leonard Nimoy went on there and he was a guy named Paris. Well, this Leonard Nimoy was actually first picked to do that, but he went to do Trek, or was it the other way around? It was both ways, believe both it or ways. not. They were both supposed to do each other's parts. Right, because Martin Landau was being considered for Spock at one point. <laughs> I mean, this is really weird, because they were both done by Desi Lu, okay, same production company, and, uh, and Martin Lando was being thought of for Spock, and uh, Roland Hand, they were thinking to have Leonard Nimoy for that part, but it didn't happen that way, so, those, so just those crazy thank your things lucky, things well, that you life. know, now Martin Lando is like this big, huge Oscar-winning star, but he could have been one of the cast of Star Trek, if not for, if not for the twist of fate, as it were. Yes, indeed. <laughs> And, and, and of course, later he went on to do a science fiction series of his own, Space 1999. Yeah, he and so, Barbara Bain, you know, they right. went on to <laughs> There we are. Get them back. <laughs> okay. Okay, then, um, well, let me see. From May 67 to my, uh, September 69, we had The Saint, which starred uh, Roger Moore, who later went on to be James Bond. So cool it, it all just kind of sits in there together. Um, there's a show called It Takes a Thief that ran from January 68 to September 70. It starred um, Robert Wagner as Alexander right. Mundy, who... Um, was a thief, but then he went on to work for the government and so on. And then he went on later to be in the show Switch. Right. Which basically is the same character. Okay. <laughs> well, then there's just a few other shows. I'll just run down the names. A Prisoner, which we talked about already. Right. Barnaby Coast. Barbary Coast, excuse Barbary. me. Not, not Barbary, <laughs> no, no. Barbary oh. Coast. Oh. Which was a, a good show. I mean, that brought um, William Shatner in. William Shatner. To do a kind of a thing. He was doing the Artemis Gordon thing along right. with... Right, kind of a um, Wild Wild West deal, but it was in San Francisco. Yeah, and it was... Uh, Along the coast there, and it was it was kind of neat. It wasn't it was wasn't him by himself. Um, oh, well, I can't remember the guy's name. Anyway, well, then we had a, a Matt Helm series, which starred Tony Franciosa, <laughs> which Matt Helm used to be a spy, but then he went on to be a detective. Okay, and then um, well, there was a show called Hunter, a show called A Man Called Sloan, which was on in the 70s, and that was a Robert Conrad, where he right. came back, and it was was actually in this time period, and then um, well. By golly, after that, there's then, then we quite get a few shows stuff, really. into the 80s. Yeah, Remington Steel, Scarecrow, Mrs. King, MacGyver, The New Adventures of Beans Baxter, and then Mission Impossible came back. Right. So, <laughs> so really, spy shows seem to be, uh, I mean, the, the James Bond shows don't, the James Bond movies recently have not been doing as well as they used to, but the, uh, but the TV shows seem to be uh, coming back. Yeah. Just because I think, well, I mean, the show would be fairly expensive to run, but uh, it, it seems like uh, they get a lot of ratings, so... That's true. We don't know. Anyways, well, it looks like we're beginning the signal to get out of here. So uh, just want to tell you next week, we think, we're not sure, but we think next week is going to be our exciting tribute to Bill Bixby. Yes. We yes. told you about earlier in the season. We couldn't be more proud. Uh, we don't know if it's going to happen, if it's going to happen next week. We, necessary materials and research have to be done, so it, uh, you just never know. Like we got to find reruns of Eddie's father and right. like that. Right. <laughs> yeah, technical things you people, the lay people in the industry, you know. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Okay. But anyways, for all of us here at Bass Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Get in, everybody. Get up.